so we are now going to start our session on cross-campus consortium link data training and collaboration. What have we learned with uh, Michael Herrick and Greta Hung? Greta, did I say your last name right? Um, yes. <laughs> okay, good. So Greta Hung is a cataloging and metadata strategies librarian at San Diego State University. Her research interests include linked open data, semantic web, identity management, and information search behavior. Michael Herrick is a cataloging and metadata librarian at San Francisco State University. His research interests include linked open data, metadata literacy, and topics in Slavic languages cataloging, especially issues related to Eastern Orthodoxy and identity formation. Welcome to both of you, and please take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Susan, and thank you all for joining today. Um, I think Greta's actually already put something in the chat, um, which you can sort of start interacting with if you if you like to do two things at once. Um, but we're excited to share with you our experience working in recent years um, with a broad population of library workers. We've been trying to introduce some of the basic concepts of linked data. Um, the people we've been focused on are what I call LD4 adjacent. Most have never attended a session of this conference in the past, but they have been hearing it. Um, people in libraries talk about linked data in general terms for years. Uh, so Greta and I are going to share our experience helping to raise awareness of what linked data is and what it is becoming for libraries. Uh, we'd also love to hear from you about similar activity you might be engaging in. So participate in whatever way you're comfortable, especially in the discussion at the end. We'll try to keep this under 30 minutes or right at 30 minutes the most. But also consider sharing a little about who you are and the analogous activities you're aware of. Um, so do refer to that um, form in the chat that Greta shared, I think, once or twice as this session was starting. So there we go. So what is the California State University? Um, sort of like the University of California system, which includes places like Berkeley, UCLA, and Davis, uh, the CSU is a formally chartered system of public universities. Um, each campus has its own governance structure and they all operate independently, uh, despite receiving public funds through a unified system run out of a chancellor's office in Long Beach, California. So this office in Long Beach takes care of the administrative functions, which can be shared by all campuses. Um, and about a decade ago, these 23 college libraries figured out that many of their functions and systems in technical services can be shared. And this led to a multi-tenant implementation of Alma and the use of Primo at all 23 campuses. So in library technical services, we often operate a little bit more like a coordinated system than a consortium, uh, sharing most of the same core metadata and increasingly many content packages. But each of the 23 campuses has user populations with distinct and I'd say varying needs. Every library is configured in its own way. So there are combinations of faculty, library specialists, IT or systems positions, which have sort of developed organically at each campus. And some small ones like Monterey Bay only have a dozen or so total permanent library positions, whereas the larger campuses, uh, it, you can see it can go up above 40,000 in total of um, total student population. They can have um, 30 faculty positions and then many staff and other positions that allow them to take on more innovative work and projects. So the CSU at its core focuses on four-year undergraduate degrees and the capacity for supporting new research and directions is limited. Uh, many campuses do have an R2 classification, but only one, San Diego State, where Greta is, consistently sort of guns for R1 classification. So in terms of navigating for and investigating linked data approaches in libraries, SDSU has been instrumental for us, and Greta herself has been key to generating what I'd call cross-campus energy and learning around um, linked data topics these past few years. So despite being a system with more than a half a million total students, faculty, and staff, uh, each campus is pretty bare bones in terms of library operations. Nearly every campus has a special collections or archives unit, and at least a handful of people on every campus cover tech services functions. But again, only um, SDSU uh, has been really hooked into sort of the PCC oriented and other community wide linked data focused learning activities, which I, I think really took off during the pandemic. Uh, the implementation of Alma did bring tech services people together from around California, and I think CSU library workers bring a friendly and can-do attitude to collective work. 
uh, the relative lack of resources here compared to some of the other institutions I've worked for over the past three decades, I think fosters this collaborative environment. Uh, but it still takes a spark or a rather energetic and determined force to make the communication and work happen. And Greta is going to now present both a summary of the history of linked data learning in the CSU and will describe some hands-on study sessions she's led. After that, I'll come back and share some insights we gained last spring from um, intentionally observing a smaller subset of linked data learners as they first engaged with, with Wikidata. Thank you, Michael. I'll provide more information about CSU's uh, linked data efforts. So in 2018, there was an early discussion about investigating best practices for linked open data in CSU repositories and discovery systems. An interest group was formed. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, there is a incident on my side. Um, so an interest group was formed, but was not continued. I joined San Diego State in 2021, and after discussions with our consortium director and department head, I started this Look Data Task Force in 2021 and co-chaired it with my colleague Samuel from CSU Fullerton. We had 10 members from seven CSU campuses. Um, while most of us were from technical services, we also had members from digital libraries, administrations, and discovery. We held our first meeting in January 2022 and identified our two-year goals. Um, they are to develop a deeper understanding of linked data and its application in libraries, um, to recommend a linked data approach in cataloging and authority and metadata management, and to explore linked data applications on library service platform and discovery portals. So looking back, I'd say these goals were very ambitious. While we didn't accomplish all of them within the set time frame, we successfully raised awareness about linked data and provided some linked data training. So centered around these three goals, um, between 2022 and 2023, we completed several projects and study sessions. We did a CSU-wide linked data survey to get a sense of each campus's involvement and interest in linked data. We asked about their familiarity with linked data, um, experience creating it, and what training topics they'd like to see. Over half of the respondents said they were either familiar with or interested in linked data, so which was a good sign that gave us the push we needed to plan some training. The survey also helped us figure out what training topics we can focus on. And as a team, we played around with Snopia and linked data editor and created some big frame data for several titles. Since Snopia is a grant funded project, we were concerned about its uh, sustainability issues related to expanding this training to the CSU community. So the Snopia task team was only limited to our task force members. We also checked out some Xlibris linked data features like the Elmer Refine Cloud app and the author, author card tool. Um, to help folks in the CSU community who are new to linked data, um, we hosted four study group sessions covering the basics of linked data, Wikidata, and Open Refine Reconciliation. The idea was to help people get started with linked data, and we had 41 participants from 14 campuses attend at least one session. And two of our task force members volunteered to lead one of the sessions. We met every other week on Zoom, with each session lasting for about 30 to 60 minutes, and typically uh, were attended by 20 to 30 people. So the two task force member volunteers prepared the session rundown similar to the provided screenshot. They were responsible for creating a pre-session reading list, breakout room discussion topics, examples, and slides. Since many colleagues had limited time outside of the training, the pre-session readings were optional. And the goal was for participants to learn the basics within the meeting itself. These sessions were beginner friendly and focused more on the what and why questions rather than the how. Instead of a hands-on practice, the emphasis was on showcasing strong examples of linked data implementations. 
By focusing on like data examples and big picture concepts, we made it easier for people to understand the potential of linked data, the connection between linked data and their work, and get inspired to explore it further on their own time. During the third study session, one of the participants shared his project focused on describing campus beauty on Wikidata, which sparked interest among the other attendees. So this inspired us to launch a CSU-wide Wikidata building project as our advanced hands-on training sessions in 2024. Um, for the Wikidata building project, we had four training sessions, each focused on one specific task. At the three of these sessions, while well, Jill, um, our task force members from San Jose State, collect one with me. We had 90 members from 12 different campuses joined us. The goal was for participants from each campus to collaborate on creating a Wikidata data model for campus buildings and to describe those buildings on Wikidata. We helped the project members to reach out to their campus facilities to get their building data online. And when that was not available, we asked them to manually search for building information online or within their special collections. After collecting the data, we cleaned up and normalized data and then used quick statements to batch create the building description in Wikidata. We also learned Sparkle queries together to visualize the data in maps and tables on Wikidata. Unlike the like, data study group we did last uh, in 2023, this Wikidata building project was designed to be practical and hands-on. The group met monthly for 60 minutes, including a 30 to 40 minutes presentation and demo, and 20 minutes Q&A and discussions. We also had assignments, and we asked participants to devote at least one hour per month after the session to finish the assignments. Michael and I reached out to all the participants individually before and after the first two sessions to make sure they were able to collect the building data and understand how to create the Wikidata model for their campus. Um, for the data models, we didn't require all campuses to follow the same one uh, data model. Instead, we provided an example and encouraged each campus to create their own because the data varied across institutions. For instance, San Diego State has information on buildings LED certificates for, uh, from the Office of System Sustainability. Um, other institutions also got some very unique data about their building from their special collections. For campuses that needed to collect data manually, a simple data model was the most practical for them. So this flexibility, along with our very description needs, led to a great discussion on how to identify the right properties and use cases of similar properties on Wikidata. The skills to collect data, create a data model, find the appropriate properties, and understand how to differentiate similar properties give participants the knowledge to start their own Wikidata projects after this building project. We also asked all campuses to create their own Wiki, uh, Wikidata project item and always include P5008, that is the focus list of Wikimedia projects. This made it convenient for campuses to visualize and analyze uh, their data on Wikidata, which also helped us gather some statistics uh, using Sparkle queries. On the right uh, is a screenshot of the map of all buildings added by our Wikidata building project members. Um, within four months, our project members created more than 200 buildings on Wikidata. So reflecting on the two training series, the Link Data Study Group we did in 2023 and the Wikidata Building Project in 2024, I believe the challenges we faced and insights we gained could be useful for other institutions looking to organize similar training and learning activities. Many participants in our first linked data study group were new to linked data, and we received a lot of questions like, why use linked data? How can it be used in libraries? And how it is related to, our, to my work? 
Well, we understand the benefits um, such as improved discoverability and data re reusability. These concepts, the new leaked data concept can feel quite abstract. So we found that providing concrete examples and demonstrations really helped clarify these points for everyone. The backgrounds and, um, and experience with linked data among participants in both training sessions vary quite a bit. And Michael will touch on this more later. Some people picked up the basics of Wikidata right away and felt comfortable with terms like QID and qualifiers after just one explanation. But for those who mostly worked with Mark or um, those came from uh, a non-technical services department, it took a bit longer for them to wrap their heads around those new concepts. So that's why we made sure to review key terms and ideas at the beginning of each session. It is important to ensure everyone is on the same page. For our Wikidata building project, Michael and I initially reached out to all members and scheduled one-on-one -on -one meetings with them to assist with their data collection. However, we soon realized that people were more likely to ask, ask us project-related questions during those one-on-one -on -one meetings rather than uh, send us emails. And even though I only led four sessions for the Wikidata building project, it required a significant time commitment. However, I had a, a great experience with the earlier uh, linked data study group training we provided, uh, where we rotated and had two volunteers for each session. So I'd say the more instructors we have on board for the training, the better. Both training we talked about consists of four sessions that by monthly linked data study group training wrapped up within two months, while the monthly Wikidata building project uh, took, took us for about four months. Personally, I felt the bi-monthly schedule more effective as participants were better able to recall content from the previous sessions. However, the bi-monthly format is also more demanding for instructors because of the tighter timeline. So that said, having a team of instructors would help manage the workload and likely lead to a better training outcome. While preparing the training and meeting with group members took some time, I felt it was a rewarding experience. I got some really great questions from the project members. Um, for our building project, one of our project members wanted to add lint acknowledgement, which I have never thought about. So we discussed whether we should propose the lint acknowledgement property on Wikidata and how to use the existing properties to describe it. I also went back and forth on whether to have members start their data collection or data modeling first for the building project. It felt like a chicken egg question for those wanting to collect building data manually since they needed to know what information to gather before they could find some. So their questions show that um, our members were really actively thinking about the things they've learned um, and also help us to evaluate our training structure. So in addition to the actual training, which Greta engaged in, uh, she and I developed together some survey and data collection tools to test on this small but relatively diverse learning population. Uh, the, the people who agreed to participate in this formal pilot study we ran this spring and summer are all technical services workers or archives, institutional repository, or systems generalists. Uh, nearly all have more than 10 years of experience working in libraries. Our aim has been to test some data collection methods to chart the learning needs and potential barriers for average library workers. Uh, we've taken into consideration some of the PCC-focused documentation about learning linked data where description techniques among advanced catalogers. But we saw in the CSU cohort an opportunity to ask questions which are potentially relevant to the learning needs of a much broader population of library and archives workers. Additionally, we started this Wikidata engagement at a time when I think the actual adoption of LRM, LRM influence workflows and library systems implementations are truly on the horizon. Well, we've not yet tried to study this question specifically, um, an underlying line of inquiry is the approach of building knowledge and skills with Wikidata engagement to engage library workers to make the conceptual shift away from Mark. 
Um, because LRM influenced environments like BibFrame are so mark aware at the moment, non LD aware habits and workflows are le more likely to creep into the production process. This has worked at the pandemic years and the PCC and LD4 communities have already touched on and experimented with some. But the needs for uh, the need for I think hands-on learning for which one can demonstrate results to local stakeholders is making Wikidata an ever more obvious choice and tool, uh, we both think. Non-PCC focused learning communities might also be more amenable to the less strict and less expensive structure of the Wikidata ecosystem. So we took this four session Wikidata building project training series um, as an opportunity to start developing some formal survey tools so that we might conduct future broad-based research. When one looks at the total number of staff and tech services, even just in North America, and the number of people actually engaging in some way with linked data, the ratio I think is pretty alarming. If we were to look at the CSU in 2021, that ratio was probably more than, I don't know, it was probably around one in a hundred maybe, but Greta's work has brought that level to perhaps as high as 10 in a hundred in the CSU itself. Um, but, but providing training opportunities is not the same thing as people learning. Therefore, our survey instruments are trying to get at two sets of info. One are the actual skill sets, backgrounds, and learning requirements of different types of library workers. Um, but the second uh, set of questions is really about what support do these subjects actually have for learning? And there are two aspects to this. One is the institutional factors or the external environment. And the second set involves internal or self-motivation factors, which encourage or inhibit activity in the learner. So thus far, we've only conducted surveys. Uh, focus groups among the cohort we've formed in the building project this summer are on the horizon. We do have some informal observational data. Much of it indicates that these learners both need to see us product for the time committed, and they need to, um, some support to figure out how to stay engaged after training sessions. Unfortunately, they've all turned out to be enthusiastic and engaged about this learning. Therefore, they wanna be able to put the next learning block in place as they build new types of skills. As you can piece together from Greta's talk, our current subject data pool all comes from the CSU library staff. Uh, the first survey had 11 people who agreed to participate um, in this formal research data pool, and seven of those took the survey at the end of the course. From the personal background data, we found we had only a little more than half participating who were classic catalogers uh, and nearly one third do not have an MLIS. Very few brought any previous exposure to the key knowledge bases required to be linked data workers and none had exposure to Sparkle yet. So the most interesting component we discovered when comparing aggregate before and after data has to do with the participants' perception of time available. For the course, participants reported a biggest barrier to learning that differed somewhat from what they reported experiencing the course itself. In general, a large part of the respondents uh, initially reported feeling supported in their workplace for making the time to grow and to learn. Uh, they came to the course, though, worrying that they might not be able to grasp the concepts or learn the tools. After the course, a much larger percentage ind indicated not enough time as the key impediment to progress. I think this is significant because our consortium at least seems to send signals that we should all take the time to learn, but it's not necessarily helping us to make the time to do that actual learning. So last spring, our linked data task force in the CSU, which um, Greta talked a lot about, had already identified essential work for this, this year and coming years on this very topic. We understand that a great deal of advocacy needs to be conducted locally and within the consortium to raise linked data learning as a key component of staff growth. I'll talk a bit more about our ideas for CSU-based work uh, in this area in just a minute. So but we welcome your thoughts, as I said at the beginning, about where we go next from this pilot study and how to broaden the data pool. Uh, we'd like to be able to create useful, significant research data on linked data learners in libraries and archives specifically. Uh, some of our ideas have been to build uh, PCC and non-PCC-based data sets, since we've already um, intuited some similarities and differences based on a published study coming out of, I think it was UCLA a couple of years ago. Uh, likely, uh, if MCO early adopters take off as a community, we think that could emerge as a relatively easy way to gain access to larger pools of linked data learners. And finally, uh, we've noticed that 
OCLC will likely roll out some linked data related applications as part of updating content DM in the coming year or so. Uh, and so we're starting to wonder if there could be opportunities to study that learning process among um, larger community of communities of learners. So in the CSU itself, we are carrying on the great work Greta and a handful of others have gotten going over the past few years. Uh, we have two small study groups this year. The first one is focusing on researching and testing the linked data tools and features currently promised on the Ex Libris roadmap. Uh, because last year, special collections staff and archives, people with arch archives backgrounds, uh, across the CSU really began to express uh, ever more interest in linked data. We have a second group looking at what coming work and learning could be pursued at the consortial level um, for, for special collections. A common theme for both groups this year is building advocacy efforts, as I mentioned, to support all linked data, data learners in the CSU. Um, they need to carve out the time necessary to learn, I think is the, probably gonna be the biggest stumbling block. In addition to putting together each year more and more recommended training pathways and learning opportunities, we're strategizing about methods to present this issue uh, to library deans throughout the consortium. Resources are scarce for sure, but we think major changes in both discovery options and metadata workflows are only gonna be successful if both the systems and the humans evolve relatively in sync. So I think we made it in under 30 minutes. Uh, thank you for listening to us today and present some of our approaches we've been taking within our consortium. Uh, but we're interested to hear your thoughts and experiences, whether you're in a consortium or not, and what have you been doing to foster or participate in linked data learning? Uh, we'll leave these questions on the screen just to sort of help stimulate conversation. I'm not seeing any questions yet, but uh, feel free to add your questions uh, in the Zoom chat or Q&A or Slack. Or if you would prefer to talk, uh, just raise your hand and I think I can unmute you for a moment. Uh, I, I'm um, okay. Yeah, we're getting some questions. Um, are any of your training materials publicly available? Um, Greta is, I, I think we're hoping to make them available. I mean, everything's available in terms of linked data task force, but that's one of the things that we've been talking about is basically, um, making them shareable across consortiums, but I think that does take a larger group. I think that sort of gets to our point of this is a um, not well publicly funded consortium um, with a lot of library workers. And that's sort of, sort of the point that we're kind of making that, yes, I, I used to work at Stanford. I've worked at Harvard in the past. And I know the difference between <laughs> whether whether you can put something like um, Lux online um, by Gale or how the rest of the world is actually going to engage with this stuff. So yes, that is definitely our intent to make everything publicly available. And as we have quality stuff, I think Greta, especially from the building project, you know, we 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 obviously derive things from the University of Washington and other people who came before. Um, and we will, in, in the sense that we have learning materials that I think are valuable and unique, we'll definitely be making them available. Yeah, uh, thank you, Michael. And I put a link in the chat. Um, we don't put all of our training training materials there, but we will. So um, that is the link to our link data task force and information will be there available soon. That's great. Um, so I don't think this is a question so much as just a comment. Um, I think that mobile web development is highly underrated in modern times and also in this context of linked open data. 
I, I was very sympathetic myself to your um, portion about the lack of time to do these things. And I appreciate that you've built it into your um, expected work for the coming year, because that's, um, I mean, just finding the time to do it is impossible, it seems like. It's another uh, comment from Carly. Um, um, Carly, would you like to um, um, unmute and talk a bit? I mean, you don't have to. I can read your comment here, but if you'd like to expand upon it, that is uh, certainly an option. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, it took a moment for me to see the prompt. To un um, I didn't have the capability to unmute myself at first. Um, yeah, I'm looking at some of the survey questions, um, and it has me thinking about how much description occurs in libraries and archives that's not bibliographic. Um, so my department at the New York Public Library, we work, um, all of our description is in mods. We do derive a lot of, um, like crosswalk a lot of um, description from MARC, EAD, and TMS. And then we also create in our system directly in like using the mod um, schema. So um, I know like speaking like, somewhat on behalf of my colleagues in the metadata, I, I think a lot of us are really interested in Wikidata, but maybe part of that is that we don't have mark as much in the brain. We don't like create NACO records, but we can create wiki data items and it feels really immediate and rewarding um, to us. And, and maybe that is, yeah, like I said, <laughs> looking at this survey has me thinking of like, oh, maybe that's why um, so many of us are drawn to wiki data is um, we're not thinking about what else, we don't have access <laughs> like working in Mark, so we're not as tied to it. Thanks, Carly. I think that's a really um, good point and also something that in our sort of combined learning groups, um, I think you're right that people who have worked in any type of XML, not Mark XML, which is just you know a version of of the um, Mark coding that's not I don't really consider XML, but people who worked in XML schema in the past do have I think an easier time um, with some of just sort of the description formatting and just sort of approaches to things and. Um, I, I do, I've worked in special collections and, and sort of traditional mark cataloging over the course of 30 years. Um, and I sort of, I'm a hybrid, I would say, and it's interesting looking in our learning population, the difference between people who are hooked into linked data, because <laughs> when is bib frame coming? And this is sort of this, like, when is mark dead? When is bib frame coming? What's going on to, you know, that's, that's an entire generation that's been happening. Um, and we're finding, I think when I came into this group two years ago, um, Greta was was managing it with with Sam from um, Barberton from Fullerton, and one of the inst initial discussions was this is actually linked data is an opportunity to bring people together from these different sort of description backgrounds and potentially and we sort of started to see that I think in the building project in the CSU at least in the um, spring because it wasn't just special collections people learning um, uh, building project data and then mark collection as separate communities so thanks Carly. And as as another another attendee commented in the chat, yes, and Wikidata is it's open source, it's free, and uh, um, and it's very, I think, easy to learn. Um, so I think that's also another reason that why some of our uh, training members are interested in in this tool. All right, we have a uh, question from Laura in uh, the Slack. Um, so she says, you mentioned tools and is wondering what kind of tools you have been using besides Wikidata. Um, so we also, uh, like I mentioned, there is a small testing of Synopia. So we tested this tool um, to create different data. Um, so 
there is also we're also doing the open refinery constellation to find the URIs. We got we had this training tool. Um, Michael, can you think of others? Um, not that we've specifically trained on, I think. And I think that's sort of the nature of this sort of session that we're leading today is that when you, I, I maybe went to some LD4 sessions two or three years ago for the first time. And this community is definitely um, providing lots of ways to hook into stuff. If it's sure, I would say at Greta's level of knowledge and expertise already. Um, and I think it's the question of, uh, you know, most people should be able to use open refine, um, whether they're working in link data or not. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not actually that scary. And if you're working with spreadsheet data and you can just get a leg up and, and some, some help to, to, to start learning it, um, there's this link data applications, but also for converting data from content DM to another system. I used to open refine a lot. So I think it's more, we have people who are very in the special collections area interested in Sparkle um, queries because some people are on the discovery side and they're seeing ways in which they could actually be doing things <laughs> with linked data without having to build it all in house. Um, and I went to the Lux presentation earlier this week and you know, I was sort of um, amazed and fascinated by how that's an entirely one institution, <laughs> um, one, it's an open system in a certain sense, but they have the resources and they're able to build something really impressive because they have the content. They, they, they have it all on their own campuses. Where you look at something like the CSU, it really is gonna be about learning specific tools that you might be able to pull in some data into some discovery system that's gonna bring the power of linked data to life. Um, and so for me, it's a really fascinating decade we're in right now <laughs> to see who can do creative stuff um, with, with little money and um, and also do the great things like like Lux that, that was is, is, is taking off at Yale. Okay, does anyone have any other questions? We have technically about um, seven minutes left in the presentation time, so time for a couple more questions if you have them. People may be um, excited to have that break that's coming up at <laughs> four fifteen. You know, I'm very excited to hear about what you've been doing, um, and it you know just different. Um, presentations that I've been to in uh, different contexts, people are really curious. Uh, a lot of librarians are catching up and saying, what is linked data? How can I get involved? What is Wikidata? So I think it's really admirable what you've been doing. Yeah, I think on that point, Susan, we've we've talked about how do we reach out to our public services colleagues because they're very, but you sort of think about, you know, one woman, Greta, sort of being the trainer for the entire CSU, it's it's really daunting, I think. And so we are at least, I think, starting to snowball a bit and we're getting more people involved because um, public services colleagues definitely are interested, but it becomes a question of the language and how, how do you um, reformulate certain technical things <laughs> into a language that everybody will engage with. Um, so I think that's, it's interesting work, but again, it takes time, it takes time. We have another question that's popped up here. Uh, would a central knowledge repository or CMS be useful? And it seems like that's something that's lacking for us. It, can I clarify? You mean for sort of training resources and whatnot, correct? Content management for training resources, is that correct? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I believe that um, is PCC working on uh, some training for this yet? I'm not sure. 
Yeah, I'm a member of PCC Link Data Training. <laughs> so yes, we are working on um, some trainings and um, we're covering different topics. So uh, that will come soon. <laughs> There's, there's so many streams that are sort of going into that ocean, aren't there? It's interesting to see them all. I suppose if we don't have uh, any other questions, uh, lots of comments about what a great presentation it was, and it it is. Uh, I've enjoyed the presentations. We had a lightning talk also uh, yesterday or Monday. I'm getting my days confused about some uh, training that was also very nice. So I guess we can have a few extra minutes for our break then. Thank Many you, thanks. Many Thank thanks you. to Greta and Michael <laughs> and to Jessica for wonderful moderation. You're welcome. So yeah, we have a break from um, until 4.30. And I believe our next presentation at 4.30 will be here on the same Zoom channel. So no need to log out if you're going to stick around for that.